When you're first walking into your STEM classroom, you are most likely met with zero curriculum. Like many of you, I left the regular classroom and jumped headfirst into my K-5 STEM role with a handful of supplies and also zero curriculum. Through trial and error, I have been able to write a year's worth of lessons for K-5 through that are connected to standards, and I'm going to be sharing with you my behind-the-scenes method in this episode. Some schools actually are fortunate enough to purchase a specific curriculum for their STEM programs. And if that is you, that is absolutely amazing. And I hope that works well for you. Now, the majority, based on teachers that I have talked to on various platforms, most teachers in the STEM world, as of now, have to write their own curriculum and start from zero. I definitely know where you're coming from. That was me. And so through trial and error, I built a K-5 STEM program that has a progression of learning and standards and a mix of different themes and topics that students learn throughout the years when they come into my STEM space. Now, I will say this isn't perfect. This is what has worked well for me in my classroom, and I am constantly updating and trying new things with my students as the years go to make sure that I am teaching lessons that are relevant and meaningful for my students. You can actually get a whole view of this year-long plan for free, and this will be linked in the show notes. You can find it also at this link, naomimeredith.com slash year-long plan. I also want to mention that my first year teaching K-5 STEM was all about building relationships and basic skills. The things that my students do five years later compared to when I first started is completely different. I really had to backtrack and build up the skills of my students, even when it came to basic technology like logging into the computer learning how to use Seesaw to document their work, and how to collaborate with others, which collaboration is something we are always working on. So don't feel like you have to do all of these things that you plan in one year. You can definitely build up to all of these lessons and perfect them as the years go on. So this is future you that we are talking about, but at least you will get a great foundation for your year-long plan and where you want your STEM program to go. When first getting started with your year-long plan, you want to brainstorm your overarching themes that all students K-5 through will be learning in your classroom. In episode two, we actually talked about what STEM education means in the elementary space, and I highly recommend this episode to help you build your background knowledge on what STEM is and also what the STEM should look like in the elementary space. When thinking about those themes, here's what I am talking about. Makerspace, robotics, hour of code which Hour of Code is definitely a freebie. There's tons of resources out there already that are actually free for you, so you might not have to do so much planning in that theme, but add in it to your year-long plan. Video and audio production, digital citizenship, and if you have the funds, Lego education kits. Again, that is definitely a freebie as well. When you purchase the LEGO education kits, they come with their own curriculum that are connected to standards. So if you are looking for something to purchase for your STEM space, I would save all of your money for LEGO education kits. Also, if you can, add in 3D printing into your lessons. If you don't have 3D printing, you can still have students plan and go through the process of creating a 3D design online, but they might not have the opportunity to print it, which is okay. Again, that is something to save your budget for if possible. Once you have a well-balanced mix of those themes, plan them out the months that you are going to see kids or works best for you. In episode 12, I talked about different creative ways that you can plan your lessons with students, especially if you see groups of kids one day at a time. Now, when I was planning this year-long plan, I do see students five days in a row. So this overarching theme can definitely vary for you. 
I use the same theme for the whole month, but if you see kids once a week, maybe you want to keep the same theme for two months. Definitely up to you, but again, have an overall balance of the themes that you're going to teach your students. For the purpose of this episode, I'm going to be using my theme of Maker Month and Earth Systems as an example to help you see how I planned out this overall unit. Now, I really wanted students the third month with me to dive into our makerspace and use that space independently. This is where I taught students how to gather supplies, how to use our money system, how to plan a budget. This is a big part of this unit when it is connected to Earth System Standards. Also, go back and check out episodes five and six, where I talk about how to set up your makerspace and also how to use that money menu and system. So for this theme, my third month of STEM, students are using makerspace. Once you have all of your themes planned out for the year and you have a balance of different types of topics, then you are going to backwards plan and tie in those relevant standards. In my opinion, you're not going to teach all of the standards in your classroom. Most likely, you are an extension of the general classroom, especially when it comes to science. I don't think STEM should be a replacement for regular science lessons. In fact, science in the regular classroom is so much fun, and that is something I do miss sometimes, is planning just a fun science experiment. Your role as a STEM teacher is you are taking those science standards and integrating other standards within it and giving it your own STEM twist. Now, maybe your principal and district has a different opinion. This is just me and how I interpret what STEM should be when the students come into my classroom. When planning my lessons through backwards planning, I like to use science as my base and build in my other standards from there. I use the NGSS, the Next Generation Science Standards, but you might use your state standards for this planning. Start with your base for science and then integrate your common core state standards that includes English language arts and math. I like to really look at the English language arts standards when it comes to reading informational text. When students are building their background knowledge and research, they are using a lot of informational text in different formats to gather that information. Check out those standards that will really help you plan those imagine stages in your lessons. When it comes to your math standards, you might be using specific standards when it comes to geometry, fractions, telling time, but you might also want to think about the mathematical practices that are being recognized in your classroom. For example, there is a mathematical practice that talks about making sense of problems and persevere when solving them. That is a huge concept in STEM, so don't forget about those mathematical practices. They are very relevant in the STEM space. Also, when you're in those Common Core State Standards, take a look at those speaking and listening skills. Again, there are so many things that you are working on in the STEM classroom when it comes to sharing work, participating in a discussion, being able to collaborate with others. These are some great standards that you can hit in your STEM space. I also like to integrate the ISTE standards for students. These are technology standards that have their own overarching themes. There also is one about digital citizenship, which you can easily tie into your digital citizenship lessons. They have their own overarching themes and then little themes within those as well. Definitely become familiar with those. Those are also a must in your STEM space. Again, keep the science standards as your base and then integrate the ELA, the math, and the ISTE all within that to create well-balanced lessons. When thinking about assessing your students when it comes to the standards, I would probably assess them how they show proficiency with that science standards. The other ones are skills that will help them to get there, but my assessment tool would really be that science standard if you are doing grades in your classroom. Pick one or two that students can attack. You are not doing all of them, and you are really zoning in on that specific standard in your STEM way. For this example, for my Maker Month and Earth Systems, I was looking for standards that were related to Earth Systems when possible, and also standards that talked about students 
demonstrating through building a model, creating, or building. That made the most sense to me for a makerspace standard and those connected together really well. I went through and highlighted those on my computer and then really brainstormed ideas from there. That leads me into my third part is to brainstorm your lessons. Now that you have your overarching themes planned for the months, you know which standards you want to teach each grade level. This is where you can bring all of those ideas to life. All of those different things you have been saving on Instagram, that you have been pinning on Pinterest, that you have been Googling, this is where you are going to bring in those ideas that are connected to standards. Now, if you really don't feel like brainstorming, I have all these lessons made and it's in a growing collection in my TPT shop. If you don't want to do this part, I know it's overwhelming for K through five. That's six different grade levels. I have it all set up for you and I'll link that in the show notes. When you are brainstorming your lessons, think about how you can bring a different experience in your classroom that is different than the regular classroom. You might actually have tools that a regular classroom might not have. Really play upon that. Can you show life cycles by using robotics? Can you use Makerspace to demonstrate a model that classrooms might not always have? Really take those standards in another direction so you're not repeating the same ideas for students and they get to explore in a different way. I'm going to be sharing with you two different lessons that are in this Maker Month and Earth Systems lesson and how you can see how I attacked this standard with a STEM angle while the teachers are still covering it within their science and reading instruction. Here's what I did for the kindergarten NGSS standard that talks about constructing an argument how plants and animals can change the environment to meet their needs. I really zoned in on ants. I was kind of a little unsure about talking about ants with kindergarten. I wasn't sure if they were going to like it or not. Now, if you know, you know with kindergarten, they might really love something. They might not. They are a complete mystery. And I love them. They're my favorite grade. I could do a whole podcast about kindergarten. (laughs) But we talked about how ants change their environment to meet their needs. It is so amazing how ants build their whole colony underground and above ground that comes literally from nothing. When you look deeper at their colony, they have a space that is special for the queen, a different room that is for their eggs, a different place for the little baby ants, another room for their food. It is amazing how they change the environment from literally nothing to meet their needs for their entire colony. So as a class throughout the week, we looked at different videos about ants, different books, different images, and then students in their own makerspace way built a cardboard maze that showed the different spaces that ants have in their colony and then had a little marble that would roll through the different rooms to go and check them all out. This was definitely appropriate for kindergarten. I know that my kindergarten teachers weren't talking about ants specifically, and so they could still teach that standard while I taught it in a different way in my STEM classroom. For fifth grade in this same unit, I picked two related standards that really go together and how they could demonstrate their knowledge. It was the first NGSS standard that talks about developing a model to describe the movement of matter, And then the second related standard was to use models to describe that energy. For this standard within this Baker Month and Earth Systems, fifth grade made a Rube Goldberg ecosystem. Students researched about an ecosystem of their choice using different tools that I provided for them. Another great opportunity to use Epic Books within your STEM classroom. Students researched about their ecosystem and all the different components that come in it. And then we learn a little bit about Rube Goldberg machines and how it forms a chain reaction. With both of these pieces of information, students use materials from the makerspace and other supplies I had on hand to build their Rube Goldberg machine to show the chain reaction of the movement of matter within their ecosystem. 
It was a very simple Rube Goldberg machine, but it was a great way for kids to be talking about that movement of matter and how different reactions should hit other or multiple chain reactions depending on what their ecosystem was. They were so excited about these Rube Goldberg machines. A lot of kids went home and started making their own and sending me videos that I could include on our school-wide news. So definitely two different ways from the littlest kids to the oldest, how we can take these science standards, integrate other standards within them, and have that progression of learning where they can show it in their own STEM way. As a recap, here are the three major things that we talked about when planning your K-5 STEM year-long plan. First, look at your overarching themes. Next, backwards plan and find relevant standards that connect to your theme. And finally, the super fun part, brainstorm lessons related to those standards. 